Okay. So now in this module, we shall see how we can go about finding that unique monic generator. To say that it exists and all is one thing, but if you actually want to find out, let us say even for a test case, a 3 by 3 matrix, it may be quite another. You might not be very happy with just the mere existence. You should ask for what is a constructive way to go about. Like at least even though we did not delve into determinants much, at least you know that this other object, this characteristic polynomial, there is a way to get around and find out what it is. Take the determinant of a minus x times i. Yeah, it is a monic polynomial and that is going to give you the characteristic polynomial. But this, min this minimal polynomial, we know it is an object that exists somewhere up there. But how do you get around to finding what this is? Okay. So that is going to be very crucial. Okay. So that is our next goal. As it turns out, the way I have laid out the foundations, you might think this is a huge degree polynomial, right? n squared plus 1, we might have to go up to. Because at least that is when we went up to n squared plus 1, that is when we assured ourselves that such a thing actually exists. But it turns out, you have to do no such thing. So a constructive way would be thus. I am going to define another ideal as if this was not enough already. So I am going to define another ideal. And that is why I actually erased that subscript earlier and you will see now. So suppose V i is a vector sitting inside the vector space V and A is an operator mapping from V to itself. I am going to define the annihilating ideal of A with respect to V i. So that is a subscript as what? This is now no longer going to be related to an operator, but of course it is still an ideal of set of polynomials such that fx sitting inside this commutative ring of polynomials is such that whenever f of a acts on vi, so f of a is an operator, yeah, I am not asking for f of a to be 0, unlike in the earlier case. But I am saying whenever f of a acts on this given vector v i, that is why this v i is to be specified a priori, then it belongs to, so this is not the 0 operator anymore. Remember, this is a 0 sitting inside v, yeah. So this 0 is sitting inside v. So this is Again, I am saying this is an annihilating ideal of A, except that I am not just adding a few more terms with respect to Vi. Okay. So let me just write it. Annihilating ideal of A with respect to Vi. Right? So what is the end game here? Of course, I must convince you first that this is indeed an ideal. Are you convinced this is an ideal? Take F1 and F2 belonging to the annihilating ideal of A with respect to Vi and let us take F1 plus F2 acting on A, acting on this vector Vi. That is nothing but F1 A acting on V i plus F2 of A acting on V i. So each of them individually gives you the 0 vector. So of course the first property of an ideal is satisfied. Okay. Second property, F belongs to the annihilating ideal of A with respect to V i and G is just a polynomial. See the good thing about all of this is that any power of A commutes with itself. That is the one of the most fundamental observations. So I do not care about whether it is F A into G A or G A into F A. You see the point? So what can I say about F times G of A? This is F A into G A. Yeah. So let us let this act on V i. 
So this is on vi and then I can tweak the order. So I can just say it is ga times fa times vi yeah which of course by virtue of this term going to 0 it is a 0 vector. So the 0 vector when acted upon by any operator has to be 0. So this goes to 0 therefore the whole thing goes to 0. So it is an ideal right. What do you think is going to be the largest degree of any polynomial in this? I mean again is this a meaningless pursuit or of course you, you know that n squared plus 1 is ideally 0. So it nullifies any vector so for vi also but when I specify this vi my hope is that I should be able to do better my search should be somewhat easier is that unfounded why am I suddenly looking for this annihilating ideal of a with respect to vi instead of the general annihilating ideal of a I somehow guess that this should make my job easier and why and how it should make my job easier is the question that I am posing now. So for that you need to look at what? What do you think? I times vi, a times vi until a to the n squared. n squared do I need that? What are the sizes of these vectors? These are vectors in V. So I need go no further than this. This is how many objects? n plus 1 and sitting inside each of these objects is in V. So they are sitting inside an n dimensional vector space and they are n plus 1 in number. So they cannot be linearly independent very basic ideas we have developed early on in this course. So therefore again there exist alpha naught, alpha 1 till alpha n such that alpha 0 uh, v i plus alpha 1 a v i plus dot 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 till alpha n a to the n v i is equal to 0. So of course these are not all 0. Right? Clear on this? So far? Okay. Next, what does this mean? Just like the earlier case. That means we can say that alpha naught plus alpha 1 x plus dot 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 till alpha n x to the n definitely belongs to the annihilating ideal of A with respect to vi. Is that clear? Just give yourself time to absorb this. Look at the definition of the annihilating ideal of A with respect to vi. It does not have to mean that the operator itself is 0, but that whatever vi you have picked up must be in the kernel of f of a. But this is precisely telling you that if everything else fails at least this will always work. Yes? Any question? Why a to the these are objects inside v. So this is a collection of n plus 1 vectors sitting inside the n dimensional vector space v. So they must be linearly independent. Uh, dependent. So if they are linearly dependent then there must exist a non-trivial linear combination such that it vanishes. So then I pull out the v as you said rightly, I pull out the v and then I am left with a polynomial in A in whose kernel v i belongs. Therefore that polynomial definitely is a candidate sitting inside the annihilating ideal of v i right if not anything else at least that fellow is sitting inside there yeah so that is going to be my member inside the annihilating ideal of a with respect to vi provided we have found this <coughs> excuse me 
how does this help us in narrowing our search for the overall minimal polynomial. Remember that is a minimal polynomial is what we wanted to wrap our heads around. As I said we know how to find a characteristic polynomial. We know only in theory that a minimal polynomial exists, but how to actually get it we do not know, we do not have a clue, right. So how do you do it? How do we get around to that business? Let us see. Here is the idea. Consider a basis for V given by B is equal to V1, V2, Vn. Right? Straightforward enough up until this point. Look at the annihilating ideal of A with respect to Vi for I going from 1, 2 till n. Okay. So, for the annihilating ideal of A with respect to V1, you get a polynomial like this. Let us call it P1x or let us, okay, let us just call it by a rather cumbersome thing. Okay for annihilating ideal of A with respect to V2, again you carry out the similar operation and you get this polynomial mu, sorry this is 1 right, mu V2 of x. Likewise you carry this out for all of those members in that basis set. Okay. What have we now got? We have got potentially n polynomials, one generated from each of these or one obtained from each of these annihilating, I should not use the term generated so loosely. So one obtained from each of these annihilating ideals with respect to members in the basis, not the overall annihilating ideal, uh, ideal right, but the annihilating ideal with respect to Vi. Is this clear? Now I am going to define something called the least common multiple or the LCM and you will see it follows exactly the same way as we defined LCM of integers. These are after all just commutative rings exactly like integers. So polynomials also can have LCM. So what is the definition of an LCM and why is it necessary? Probably you have already guessed. What we will be claiming is that the minimal polynomial is going to be nothing but the least common multiple of these fellows that I have tabulated here, okay. And that is going to be the central idea, okay. So what do we do? Let us say uh, the definition for a set of polynomials g1 x till g k x, this is g2 x, g k x, g x is said to be the L C M if two things first. It is of course a common multiple which means that G i divides G for all i, of course i going from 1 through k, i going from 1 to k. That is not enough, right? That is just a definition of a common multiple. 
if it has to be the least common multiple, just transfer your thought process from magnitudes of numbers to degrees of polynomials. What do we say? So we do not go for degrees explicitly, but you know how the division is carried out here. For any h yeah, such that g i divides h, what do we have? We must have g also must divide h. So any time and you find go and find any other common multiple, this is the least common multiple. So this least common multiple must divide that other common multiple, any other common multiple. Yeah. G must divide H. So that is the definition of the least common multiple of a set of integers, uh, sorry, a set of polynomials. I keep saying integers because they are so similar, right? In algebra, we do not make a distinction. No, it is not really very complex. I mean, if you write it in terms of degree, how would you have to say this? You would have to say for any h of a degree greater than g such that it is also a common multiple. How many words are you spending there? On the other hand, this for any other h, okay, of course, this h is also, yeah. So it is a given that these are all polynomials. So that goes without saying writing it a little loosely here, okay. So first is it is a common multiple and second is it is a least common multiple. Now the claim is and this is a big claim here. So you see this, I hope this definition is okay so I can erase this. I do not want to really erase that part because that is more important. It is okay. So the claim is that the minimal polynomial Okay, how have I denoted this now? Okay. Oops. What did I write? Did I write A here? Uh oh. That lands me in trouble. Did I write A in subscript? Oh, great. Thank you. So, the minimal polynomial of A, maybe I should also write somewhere this A should come here, right? Double subscript perhaps. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So the minimal polynomial is nothing but the LCM of mu a v1, mu a v2 until mu a vn. If this is true, then I have actually outlined a constructive process for you to go ahead and find the minimal polynomial, okay. This is just a statement, we have not proved anything yet. So I will take another module, a short module in which we will just prove this, okay and then we will be done, okay. <coughs>